Hi everyone, thanks for your interest in our research. My name is Meng Zhang and I'm a PhD candidate from UC Santa Barbara. It is my honor to present our research on New Sleep. This work was conducted with Facebook Reality Labs and I really appreciate the valuable support I received from all my co-authors. New Sleep is a pneumatic fabric sleeve that is able to render controlled haptic feedback with compression, skin stretch, and vibration. It is soft, compact, and can render a large range of expressive haptic feedback on user's forearm. So why we are interested in haptics? We feel things in all different ways in our life, from perceiving materials to interpersonal interactions. Wearable technologies with haptic feedback have also entered our life in recent years. However, most human-computer interactions don't use haptics, and when they do, it's simple vibration. Wearable haptic displays that can communicate more information would be valuable. The haptic information we received is handled by our brain in a complex way, through multiple types of haptic receptors in the skin. The target location of new sleeve is user's forearm, which is covered by hairy skin. The hairy skin contains several types of tactile mechanoreceptors. Through these mechanoreceptors, mechanotactile stimuli such as pressure, vibration, and skin stretch can be felt and interpreted by human. Because different types of the mechanoreceptors have different sensitivity over different stimuli, it is believed that stimulating multiple types of the haptic receptors can help generate more expressive haptic feedback. There are many wearable haptic devices made of soft or rigid components. These devices are mostly designed to be worn on fingertips, wrist, hand, forearm, and upper body using pneumatic, motor-driven, shape memory alloy, and other actuation methods. Many of those haptic wearables use multimodal mechanotactile stimulations in order to render a large range of haptic stimuli. For example, bellow band and force jacket combine compression and vibration in their actuation. Researchers have also combined compression with skin stretch in their devices. Here is a brief summary on existing research on haptics. It is clear that none of them have integrated compression, skin stretch, and vibration all together in a soft, wearable device. Besides multimodal actuation, we further designed soft sensors to enable closed-loop regulation of compression force to render controlled stimuli across different users. We also mechanically validated the performance of the actuator, sensor, and the closed-loop control. To show that users can actually feel the stimuli, we conducted psychophysical studies on absolute detection threshold and just noticeable difference. Finally, to investigate how users can understand the meaning from multimodal haptic cues, we conducted subjective assessments on 23 selected felt effects. With the capability of the device, we also envision some potential applications of new sleep, including notification, navigation, discrete communication, and gaming. When paired with other technologies such as tracking, we expect that new sleep can be of great use to people's daily life. To implement new sleep system, we developed the soft actuators, soft sensors, and closed loop force control method. With the goal of rendering compression, vibration, and skin stretch with only one type of soft actuators, fluidic fabric muscle sheet, abbreviated as FFMS, came as a good candidate. These actuators can extend and contract without radial expansion comparing to McKibben muscles. Comparing to shape memory alloys, FFMS actuators change length without the need of temperature change. Therefore, these actuators can provide compression and skin stretch without introducing other haptic cues. By using pneumatic actuation with fast switching valves, vibration could be generated. To evaluate how those actuators render forces and vibrations, we fabricated the actuators based on the method described in the FFMS paper. We first stacked two layers of non-stretch cotton fabrics, then put straight stitches on top. After that, we insert the soft tubing in between the fabric layers and the stitches. 
We sew one end of the soft tubing and wrinkle the fabrics, and attach rigid tubing on the other end. Therefore, when the soft tubing is pressurized, the actuator extends longitudinally because of the radial constraints by stitches and fabrics. We use this state as the initial and default state. When the soft tubing is depressurized, the actuator contracts and exerts force longitudinally. We conducted evaluations on the quasi-static linear force for those actuators. The results show that the compact actuator can generate more than 4 newton when both ends are fixed and can still generate more than 1 newton force when one end has moved 16 mm. For vibration characterization, we conducted transient analysis of the compression force across different frequencies. Results show that although the force magnitude attenuates with the increased frequency, an easily perceivable force of 15 mN can be achieved at 20 Hz. We made six of these actuators and integrated those actuators to a stretchable fabric sleeve. Two of them are compression actuators located on the proximal and distal forearm. The rest of four are skin stretch actuators uniformly distributed around and tangent to the forearm. All six actuators can render vibration stimuli. After finalizing the actuation, we see a need of developing a sensor to control the compression force. Different users have different forearm sizes and anatomies. Open loop pressure control method may result in different compression forces among different users. A suitable grounding force is also critical to prevent the slippage of compression actuators. Therefore, we use soft sensors located on the ventral side of the forearm to get the compression force feedback. We choose capacitive sensing for its insensitivity over temperature change. A press on the sensor results in a change in the gap between the electrodes and accordingly, a change in the capacitance. Based on this theory, we use a layered structure of dielectrics, electrodes, and insulators for the sensor. We tried various dielectrics and finally selected silicone with microgrooves to tune the sensor sensitivity to an appropriate range for our actuators. We also use conductive fabrics as the electrodes and flexible insulators as the backings. We used the same compression force testing setup as in the transient compression tests to evaluate the sensor. Results show that the sensor has more than 12% relative change in capacitance under the force applied by the actuator and exhibits a small hysteresis. A linear fit is sufficient to capture the variance of the data. To show that the sensor feedback is consistent on different sized arms, we repeated the test on cylinders with different circumferences. The results indicate that the capacitance outputs are highly consistent. Therefore, we expect the sensor output does not change significantly with varying arm sizes. Recall the importance of compression force control, we further implemented a closed-loop control strategy to use the feedback from the soft sensor for force control. Here is an overview of the hardware for new sleep control system. This system takes measured capacitance from the sensors into consideration and adjusts commands to the pressure regulators to achieve desired compression force. The control structure consists of an inner loop, an outer loop, and a feed-forward term. The inner loop comes with a pressure regulator for precise pressure control, which is faster than the outer loop. The outer loop takes feedback from the sensor for error correction. The feed-forward term uses a personalized user stiffness model to improve the conversion speed of the controller. Based on the feedback from the soft sensor, the feed-forward model together with the integral controller, controls the pressure regulator input signal. With the pressure change in the actuator, the compression force on user's arm can be adjusted. To evaluate the performance of the proposed control method, sinusoidal waveform signals are used for tracking error evaluation, and squared waveform signals are used for response time evaluation. Results show that the root mean square tracking error for the sinusoidal input was 0.1 newton, and the settling time for the squared wave input was less than 0.3 seconds. 
After the mechanical evaluation on the new sleep system, the next question is whether people can feel the stimuli or not. To investigate on that, we choose to measure absolute detection threshold to get the lowest level of stimuli for a person to detect the feedback. The results of absolute detection threshold show that thresholds are lower for the compression actuators than for the skin stretch actuators, indicating that users are more sensitive to compression actuators. Next, we want to know if people can distinguish different levels of the stimuli so that we have references when designing multi-level haptic feedback. Results of the just noticeable difference study show a higher variability for the skin stretch actuators, which is consistent with a reduced sensitivity to those actuators in the ADT study. It is important to note that the maximum values in both figures are about 40 kPa, which is small comparing to the maximum range of the stimuli, which is 200 kPa. The above psychophysics studies establish that all six actuators of new sleeve can generate perceivable and distinguishable compression and skin stretch sensations. As mentioned earlier, new sleeve can also generate vibrations. Recall that multimodal stimuli could potentially enrich the expressiveness of the haptic messages being sent. Therefore, we conducted subjective assessments using a vocabulary of 23 multimodal field effects to show the expressiveness of new sleep. For those who are not familiar with it, field effect is defined as an explicit pairing between a meaningful linguistic phrase and a rendered haptic pattern. When designing the input signals, we think in terms of single actuator response design and combined actuation design. Here are some examples of the control signals we designed. For example, for the acceleration field effect, the two compression actuators operate at a higher and higher frequency to express the message of acceleration. The rotation cues use the sequential actuation of the skin stretch actuators to express the rotation direction, and vibration is used to make the rotation more continuous. We tried out many possible combinations and finally selected 23 field effects grouped into seven families, including notification cues, physical object simulations, navigation cues, as well as some life experiences. These effects use combinations of compression, skin stretch, and vibration. Force control is selectively used when skin stretch actuators are involved. We ask participants to rate on goodness of fit and goodness of feel of those effects. Goodness of fit indicates how well the haptic sensations fit the name we give for the feel effect. Goodness of feel indicates how well the sensation feels or how pleasant the sensation is. The ratings are generally high for both of them. Some feel effects have relatively low goodness of fit, such as spring, snake crawling, and underwater which some participants indicate that they do not have enough real-life experience to compare those effects with. During the follow-up discussion after the rating, multiple participants commented on liking the soft sleep form factor. It is interesting that participants have different opinions on the compression feeling. Some think that the squeezing is too strong, while some think it is perfect in order to grab the user's attention. Many participants have also indicated the applications of this fail effect, such as gaming, VR, and emotion induction. There are still a lot of improvements we could do on new sleep. For example, we used air pressure selling for the testing in this paper. The portability of the device could be improved by using a portable compressed air reservoir. Multi-sensory integration with visual and audio cues could possibly enhance users' immersive experiences. As of noise concerns, our current setup uses an off-the-shelf muffler to lower down the noise from the pressure regulators. Future work could use a customized muffler and soundproofing forms to further reduce the noise. Thanks again for watching this video presentation. I would like to thank all colleagues who supported this research and thank all volunteers who participated in our user studies. Thank you.